there are a lot of really exciting updates in DaVinci Resolve 19. And a lot of them do exactly what it says on the tin. The music remixer remixes music, right? The film look creator or whatever it's called makes film looks text-based editing, edits based on text. But there is one new feature that is a little more nebulous. And today, I'm gonna talk about it, go over sort of the introductory uses I think are probably the most common uses, but also uh, hopefully give a little bit of a peek at some of the uh, really exciting potential in this one new feature, and that is referenced fusion compositions. Now, in order to demonstrate what's really cool about referenced fusion compositions, I need to sort of lay out the problem. So I've got a simple setup here where I have a screen recording and then uh, this camera recording. And say I was editing this and I wanted to cut back and forth between me full screen and me in a little picture in picture window down in the corner uh, where you see my desktop. So I have, you know, a tutorial cam preset. So I will drop that on a few of these clips so that, you know, it's me down in the corner me down in the corner, back and so off. But what if uh, for whatever reason I decide, hey, I want uh, my picture in picture little bubble to be over in this corner or up here. And I want to make that change across all of these. Now in a really long video, I could have lots of individual clips that I then uh, dropped this effect on. And if I were to go to the controls for that effect on any one of these clips and move it over, of course that would only move it for that individual clip. I would have to do that change for all of these. But what if there's another way? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna undo all this cool little work I did. <laughs> and on this first clip, I'm gonna right click and select Create Reference Composition. You can give it a name if you want, I'm good without it. And it will add that to your media pool. And then now when you take that clip and you open the Fusion Composition, what you are actually opening is that reference composition. So very quickly, if I were, you know, to uh, create a merge node and add a really basic ellipse mask, set the operator to mask, boom, and hop back to the inspector, boom, I have masked that clip. And uh, just on that first basic level, watch this. If I then go to this next clip and make sure that reference composition is uh, uh, selected in the media pool and right click on that, I have a new option to link to reference composition. And if I click that, it applies that same mask on two of those different clips. And if I go back to the first clip or the second clip, open that up and change something about this mask, then that change is reflected on both versions. That is what referenced compositions do. You can make a fusion composition as complex as you want and whatever clip or clips you apply that to, it takes that clip, and the really important note I'm gonna circle back to soon, but it takes that clip and runs it through that composition based on the media and nodes that you set up when you're building it. So we kept this super basic, of course, but I've also got um, this little macro that is just like a slightly more built out circle deal. So I've got position inside the mask and scaling, and then your position anywhere else in frame if you want it right in the center for some reason you could do that. And that is linked between these different clips. I could go to a third clip, also link that to reference composition, and now that is plugged in as well. Now let's circle back to a few important things. Uh, first, I said a uh, clip or clips. Check this out. Uh, if I uh, take these clips again, line them up, you know, I, I can do this with just like a small section of these. If I select both of those clips, and right click and go to create referenced composition. It'll give me this new option, it'll create that. And then when I load uh, that top clip into a fusion composition, now I have two media ins, background layer being that first clip, that next layer being this second clip. So you can build complex effects that are dependent on multiple different video clips. You can remix them however you want and you can apply that large complex fusion effect to any number of combined clips anywhere else in your timeline. Now, something very interesting happened in this demonstration um, that uh, shows off the next thing I really need to, uh, to prove. Okay, so did you notice when I made this a referenced composition, all of a sudden this clip zoomed in and it did that for a very important reason. I'm on a 4K timeline, I believe. 
Nope, <laughs> I'm on to 10, a 1080 timeline. This video clip is 4K and this screen recording is 1440p. And when you apply a referenced composition to a clip and open it up in Fusion, when I look at these media that it's brought in, it is bringing them in at full resolution. This is kind of similar to what would happen if you just had a clip and uh, brought it into Resolve on its own. Even on a 1080 timeline, the clip would be full resolution. But if you were to uh, apply an effect just to a clip on your timeline, what Resolve actually does, if I open up the instance of this effect, is that what it brings in is what is visible on the timeline at the timeline resolution. So I dropped this tutorial cam uh, clip on it, but it is only dealing with my footage at uh, uh, 1080 resolution. So if part of my effect scaled up this footage, I would be losing quality. And that I think is a giant benefit to these reference compositions. Peek behind the curtain, I'm intending to use this feature to build out the next version of my TikTok or vertical editing presets. And this will allow me to maintain uh, a maximum quality. I think they're gonna be a little complicated to build because of that, but I, I'm confident I'll be able to work out uh, all the kinks and get something pretty cool for all of you. Uh, but um, because of how Fusion works bringing in that resolution, um, why did this zoom in this clip? Well, if we open that back up in Fusion, this media in uh, one, which is going into the background, which makes sense because this was the background clip, is a smaller resolution. So even though it is bringing in the full resolution of this camera, it is compositing that using a merge node over this smaller resolution so the clip is outside the bounds. So if for whatever reason you wanted this to just be that straight, you know, compositing uh, it full frame, you would have to bring the size back down until it just fits in frame. But of course, the point being here, you can do all sorts of stuff, scale this down, move it over and scale down the background clip, move it over here, rotate it. Uh, now this is also gonna show off something pretty interesting because um, remember, I only brought in that top clip in to Fusion because the top clip, even though you selected both of them to make a reference composition, it is only sort of applying that reference composition to the top clip. So if I go back to the edit page, oh, we have some pretty interesting stuff I wasn't expecting. Okay, um, this is interesting. We have this black background here, but if we go ahead and just disable that top clip, now you see the background clip again. So let me see, if I scale those up and bring in this video clip, okay, it is showing none of what's underneath it. So even though this reference fusion clip is maintaining this transparency, it doesn't look like that is showing up, even if we have other stuff going on on the timeline. And that probably brings us to the last point, uh, which is that right now, um, while this is a cool system off the bat, there are still some super clunky things. Um, maybe most importantly for people who get into building this, uh, let me bring in a fre fresh copy, is that you have to choose a clip to create a reference clip before you do any actual uh, work on it in Fusion. For instance, if I open this clip in the Fusion and I uh, make that same sort of, you know, just plain old circle mask and I uh, mask that here. If I take this clip and I'm like, okay, this I wanna share across multiple clips, let me make it a Fusion clip. If I do that, if I create a reference composition, it is gonna wipe that work and when I open that back in the Fusion page, that's gonna be gone. I have seen this as a note from several people asking Blackmagic Design, hey, uh, if I have a clip and I make it a reference clip, just look at what is already being done to that clip in the Fusion page. I think that would be a great addition. As well as that, I, I understand um, that having multiple clips and selecting multiple clips is a great way to uh, tell a reference composition you want two media in nodes. But I also think since these live in the media pool, you should just be able to right click and right next to fusion composition, do like new referenced fusion composition, just make it right in the media pool. And then maybe later you can, you know, update those uh, media in nodes if that's possible. And just with the, this quick testing, uh, I would probably add in, I have some way to address this transparency. Maybe you want a reference composition that does have two clips, but you still want to be able to see the background. What do you do then? But I don't hate this implementation right now because I did kind of assume that you would actually still see this entire clip underneath that. So compositing over black might be sort of a middle ground. Um, you can't see the bottom clips that are used, but you also can't see 
any clips underneath it that aren't used. But to sort of wrap up, uh, referenced fusion compositions right now are great for those use cases where you have lots of repetitive uh, effects across a timeline or across a project that you might uh, want to you know, change or alter at a later point without going through and adjusting all those fusion compositions or all those effects after the fact. Ooh, last thing. Of course, once these are in this timeline, uh, what do you do with them? Oh, hey, check it out. Just found something uh, exciting and very useful. These reference clips live in this timeline. You can't view them because there's no media connected, but you also can't like save these or I believe share with them right now, but you can store them in a power bin. Oh, and I just tested importing and exporting those bins and that also works. So that's cool. We have some way to share these compositions. I'm sure I'll be exploring that um, as I've got stuff at, if I you start building out pro products around these. But to wrap that small section up, um, I'm very interested in how um, reference compositions might expand and maybe iron out a few of these small little issues because um, I do think they are pretty powerful and it's like a whole new field um, that we can explore together. Like I said, this is just a tool they released without you know a whole lot of information or guidance about how this could be used. Uh, I think I've spelled out some cool stuff here and hopefully some really cool stuff to come. And while you're waiting maybe on some of those products, uh, don't forget that I have dozens of uh, both free and paid uh, DaVinci Resolve pro presets and plugins and templates over on my website, check those out. Some of them should be listed under this video as well. If you haven't got some of those, there's some cool stuff in there. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.